Hey, what's going on Schwartz Forest? Welcome back to the channel. In case if you're new here, my name's Dave. May the Schwartz be with you. And hey, did you know it's a great day to wear a watch? Today I have on my Gallant. This is a uh, new one I'm giving some wrist time to. It's kind of got that blue dial. That's a terrible uh, shot there, by the way. There we go. <laughs> but even better than the new watch, I have a new guest who I'm honored to feature on my channel. And it's my hopes that you guys will get to see how awesome she is, not only for her passion that she has with regard to watches, but also in her quality of work that she's produced on her YouTube channel and her Instagram page. So be sure to go subscribe to her channels, which will be linked in the description down below. And without further ado, Eve, thanks for joining me here today on my channel. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a bit about where you are in your watch collection journey for those who may not know. Uh Thanks for inviting me, Dave. I'm really honored to be here, and thank you for the glowing introduction. So, hi everyone. I'm Eve. I run a watch watch channel called uh, Alias Steve Dan. I started my YouTube channel back in April 2019. I started it because I was looking for instructions or a description on my brother's reverso. Mm -hmm. uh, this was the time I was babysit babysitting my nieces. And I was curious about the watch, but he wasn't there. So I, I tried Googling for instructions, uh, but I couldn't find anything about it. Um, and then I realized that there may be others who are looking for instructions or demonstrations on how to get a particular watch to work. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started making watch demo videos of anything I could get my hands on. I also like taking pictures, so I started an Instagram account as well. So far, it's been fun interacting with fellow watch enthusiasts in the YouTube world and in the Instagram world. Yeah, I totally agree. That's that's so cool how, you know, being unable to find information on your brother's watch kind of gave you like that push to make videos for others to benefit because you were in those shoes yourself. Um, and, you know, it's funny, we share a similar story because I also started my YouTube channel um, based on an in inability to find reviews on uh, a couple of you know watches and so after buying those that I was interested in I figured you know hey I'd be the first to do those reviews and that kind of branched into my channel as it is now and a lot of my followers kind of have probably heard this before so for any new people out there <laughs> um, and you know it's a mix of reviews of watches I get and also my journey on watch collecting and connecting with other watch enthusiasts such as yourself you know, you've been a really big inspiration to me with regards to your own efforts in quality of your videos and your you know, photography. And, you know, when I see your work, it's really easy to see the passion that you have towards, you know, your watches. So I, I love it. Good job. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it really means a lot to me to hear you say that. And I've been a subscriber of the Dave Schwartz channel for so long. <laughs> and I never imagined I could be invited here. So thank you yeah thank you very much oh thank you my pleasure it's really cool um you know connecting with people around the world it's it's awesome i i know people have their gripes about youtube and other things but i think it's amazing all right so real quick before we go further i just i completely forgot my mistake um let's do a wristwatch check you're my guest so what uh, you got on the wrist i'm wearing the quartz credor watch it's also vintage yeah. I, i'm not sure what year it was from but i got such i got such a good price for it i couldn't help but get it <laughs> yeah it's so cool i've seen it and um on your instagram and and it's like i feel like there's some of those watches when you see the deal if if it's like not so much that it's too good to be true but like you just know it's not gonna last you gotta jump on yeah. it so great great pick. it was one of those hard to ignore things for sure yeah i think you did well um but yeah lovely and i so on the wrist i'm I'm doing wrist time for this watch so this is my gallon i'm so bad at this but wow. it's like one of the new ones they send me in this kind of navy blue dial um mm -hmm. interesting is like it's got this <laughs> where am i going with this it's got like an integrated rubber or silicone yeah. strap but um so i'm gonna ask them about that like can you get replacements are others other strap like aftermarket straps able to be put on this one because i, I kind of want to feel that out and see long term wise how it's going to be but so far short term it's it's a just a fun cool it little looks watch, really nice so. thanks yeah and it, it, they, this is like the one that has swiss um movement parts in it so it's like wow for 50 bucks i'm i'm kind of impressed yeah yeah that is impressive a video will come out soon for sure <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to that 
Yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have some really interesting topics to discuss for our viewers today. Um, we're gonna be ranging from going over your watch collection all the way to giving some advice for those who may be looking to start a collection of their own, both in the new and the vintage world. So let's begin with your watch collection to really set the stage um, on where you are in your journey now. And we can show off all your watches. And then what I'd like for you to do is to kind of pick three that may have any significance mm -hmm. or mark a special moment that you'd be okay with telling us more about. Um, so the first one that I wanted to highlight is the Rolex Datejust. Nice. It was a gift from my parents in 2017. And I guess it's a watch that kickstarted my watch journey. I'm not a, I'm not particularly into luxury items as a wealth thing, mm -hmm. but looking at it reminds me that my parents love me, and that they're proud of me. And not that I needed any material proof, but it just serves as a nice reminder. Right. Um, now, because I, it wasn't a watch that I could bring everywhere. I looked for alternative mechanical watches and because of that I started looking into other watches, watch brands like Orient and Seiko. Mm -hmm. The second one I wanted to share was the SNKL 45. It was supposed to be originally a Christmas gift for someone else. <laughs> uh, however, yeah. I kept going back into the closet and opening it and then like looking at it, do I want it? <laughs> and like, do I want it or not? So. Um, I went, uh, I'd probably get crucified by other watch enthusiasts for saying this, but when okay. I went to the Seiko boutique to look at a Grand Seiko, mm -hmm. I felt like the happiness level looking at the Grand Seiko was just the same for me as the SNKL 45. Wow. And uh, yeah, maybe I might change my mind later on as mm -hmm. I evolve into this hobby, but for now, this is where I'm at and this is like how, how I genuinely feel about it. Cool. Okay. And uh, the third one that I wanted to highlight was this King Seiko. So this was the first watch that got me hooked into vintage watches. And this hmm. was the one that opened my eyes to the treasures that I can find in the pre-owned world and in the rich history of Seiko. Uh, my, my dad warned me before about the headaches of getting into pre-owned watches. Right. Uh, however, he th this one gave me the confidence to start looking at other vintage treasures. Not to say that the experience has been perfect, but it's been a good experience for me so far. Wow, and you know, these are really cool watches in their own, and I love the stories that you have for each one. So thank you for sharing that. I mean, you know, often when I discuss collections with people on this level, it rarely does every watch have a, you know, oh, I bought it because I liked it answer you know it's not generally the case there's almost always many more layers to it than that and i think it's awesome how these three different watches tie into such important and meaningful moments in both your watch collecting but also in life just in general such as with you know your gifted date just um, which is just awesome you know and, and like you said not that you needed it as confirmation from your parents but just that reminder so that's very cool and uh yeah thanks for sharing I do have some watches that I bought because I like them and yeah. that's how I ended up buying too many, <laughs> many more than I needed. I'm with uh, you. Not all of them have um, stories at the beginning, uh, behind them at the start, mm -hmm. but as time goes by as I wore them, they also started to have stories attached to them. That's why even though right now I know I have way too many, mm. too, too much, too many watches, yeah. I can't seem to let any of them go yet right now yeah i'm i'm i i totally understand and i uh i can understand that sentiment because i i too have i've had sort of like a buyer's remorse with some watches uh, but most of them not that's not the case so you know kind of diving a bit more from what you mentioned with your king seiko in particular since that was the watch that got you started on the path like you said not perfect but into the vintage watch world yeah i did want to ask for others out there like do you have any advice for those who are looking to buy used or vintage timepieces? Mm, okay. Uh, number one, follow first the social media accounts of sev several reputable vintage watch sellers. Mm. Uh, don't rush into things. Get a feel of how much things are across the different sellers. Uh, make sure you check for reviews of these sellers 
and it's better to pay for a little premium than to get scammed by someone who's selling it cheaper. Uh, number two, usually the good ones with the, go the good prices get picked up fast. And uh, if you notice, the ones that get left behind on the websites are the not so good ones, uh, not so, or the ones not so in not so good conditions, or are too expensive. Mm -hmm. And when you follow the social media accounts, you'll be updated on the fresh items, and you get first dibs on them. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, number three, try to buy local, so it's easier to return when there are problems. Uh, number four, check eBay and Chrono24 for price comparison. Don't just check for the current selling price. Check as well how much it actually sold for. And finally, number five, manage expectations and be prepared to have it fixed in case anything goes wrong. Uh, find a reputable and affordable watch repair guy. Um, right now, I don't have one yet. Mm -hmm. I should have. I have I currently have two watches I yep. need to get fixed but since I have no go-to person the watches are now just sitting in my drawer I can't wear them because they don't look good or I they're see. not working well yeah yeah that's all really good advice and th I can definitely see how important it is to know the watches that you're after um, it seems like it's even more important than that is knowing your seller and kind of looking at their sort of online you know reputation um if you're not going strictly local like you mentioned is, is a good thing too i know sometimes that saying of if it's too good to be true it probably is often applies in in the used market so i would imagine the same in the vintage world uh, but using good judgment it sounds like you know you can get some really good deals so awesome advice i would take all of that for sure i haven't bought really vintage watches so um i think oh yeah i'll keep this as a checklist because <laughs> i don't want to make any mistakes and you know learn the hard way so thanks for sharing that i think out of the vintage watches i got i feel like i got a really good deal on my oris big crown pointer date mm. it's from the 90s the price was really good it was less than half of similar ones in chrono 24 the movement was working well and it came with a box. The only issue was the scratched up crystal and the faded gold plating on the on the bracelet. Yeah. It was also really, really dirty. And I made a clean, <laughs> cleaning video about it. It was yep. so disgusting. I remember. After I was done cleaning, my hands were so gray. It was stained <laughs> gray from all that dirt. And how can how can something so small keep that much dirt? So uh, going back to the to the list of um, things that you should consider when buying vintage watches, yeah, make sure when you get them, clean them first. There's so much arm cheese <laughs> hidden in the hollow end links yeah. and in between the links of the bracelet. Yeah, um, arm cheese. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly what it is, right? I remember seeing that video when you cleaned the Oris, and I was watching it just like, wow, like what an eye opener to how dirty some of these watches can get over time. Um, it makes me wonder, like, are any of mine <laughs> at that <laughs> point yet? I hope not. So probably just regular cleaning is a, is a good practice too. Um, but I gotta say like not just with watches, but for me like with a lot of things I always get this kind of pleasure or satisfaction from restoring and cleaning things like it's like under the layer of grit and grime and dirt is still this functional and now after restoring it, you know, beautiful thing that would have otherwise been like overlooked and disregarded. Yeah. And I think that that kind of helps you sometimes when you buy those vintage watches or older uh, items like it doesn't look as good, but when you clean it and then you're like, you got an even better yeah. deal. Uh, yeah. So, so I really appreciate you sharing some advice there for others. And I know at least for me, I've learned a lot of things by making mistakes, you know, sort of trial by fire, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. as I know most of us do with new hobbies. So I got to ask, like, what are some mistakes or regrets that you've experienced with your watch collecting that you would share with your viewers or with our viewers? My first one is not knowing that day, the, the day or date complication is not quick set. Mm. Um, so my fingers are they're not 
they're kind of sensitive, I guess.、Mm-hmm. That when when I keep having to turn the crown, it's very it turns very red. Yeah. So the first time was with was、um, when I bought the Vostok Amphibia Scuba Dude.、Mm. I that was the first time I realized that not all watches have quick set date. And then I made that mistake again with the Rico Day Date because I got spoiled by、um, by vintage Seikos where I've had quick set date, like even from like the seven watches from the seventies they had quick set date. And so I didn't realize that I should have checked that the Rico Day complication was a quick set、uh. quick set date too.、Uh, number two. Find your go-to watchmaker because there will be times where you need to get something fixed, and it happens often with vintage pieces.、Hmm. I've had pieces now that I can't wear out because the crystal is cracked, and、oh. it's harder now because watch repair isn't something that I would risk going out for during this time. Right. So find a watch repair guy whom you can trust to give you fair prices. And so I, I approached this freelance repair guy upon recommendation of another watch enthusiast,、mm-hmm. and this guy told me how much he paid for the service. And when I pro- when I approached this freelance watch repair guy, he quoted me seven times the price of what he offers the other guy. Wow! So I don't know why he tried to charge me so high. Yeah. And then later on, he just kept kept coming back, lowering the prices, but. It just left a bad taste in my mouth, and I didn't trust him anymore. So I didn't buy it. Yeah. And then I, I guess I'll just have to look for that trusted watch repair guy when the vaccine comes out. Yeah, that's ouch. Because like, it's pretty shady to be quoted such a difference in price. I could see a little bit higher, like maybe there's a little bit loyalty with the other, you know, person.、Mm-hmm. But like, especially knowing what he had quoted the other person, like. I definitely think you made the right choice for sure. Going with your gut instinct on that one, because you know building those kinds of relationships are tough when starting out. Because you know, obviously, you want a fair deal. You also want to give your business to someone that you know you feel you can trust and you feel is deserving, especially of your hard-earned money. So, yeah, that's really great advice to consider. And and you know, I gotta be honest, I still don't have any kind of dedicated watchmaker to go to myself. So that's something I'm personally going to have to take away from this because. I need to work on getting acquainted with some that are here locally in my area, and you know I've been lucky with most of my watches, you know, knock on wood.、Um, but I know it's just a matter of time where, eventually, at some point, I'm going to need to have something done by a skilled watchmaker. Or I'm not going to have the tools or whatnot.、So. I think for modern watches, for me at least, I haven't had the need for a watchmaker. It's just been the vintage ones. But、mm. you know, knock, knock on wood. <laughs> Yeah. On my vin- on, on my、uh, modern watches. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. I could see I could see the the watch repair side kind of being more for vintage watches, being older.、Um, yeah. So that you know, this was something I'm curious about because you know I feel watch collecting can often be a rather lonely sport, so to speak, for us.、Um, but share with me, like, you know, how do your your friends, your family, or coworkers feel about? Your specific collecting of watches, like, do they relate or and understand, or do they see it as a strange hobby or waste of of time and money? Well,、uh, my family and friends aren't into as into watches as I am.、Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think they relate, but they're. I think they're more amused.、Hmm. I mean, as long as I spend responsibly and I don't <laughs> over overspend,、right. and, yeah.、Um, <laughs> I guess they're okay with it. They're more. It's more of a, a source of amusement than a source of criticism.、Hmm. And as for my friends, men and women alike, they ask me, they ask me for advice whenever、uh, they're thinking of buying a watch.、Hmm. Uh, cool. For now, I don't personally know anyone who's into watches enough to start an Instagram account dedicated to watches. So maybe that part. About having a dedicated Instagram account for watches is a strange concept for them. Could be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that's so cool of your friends to ask for advice with watches. Like you're their watch go-to kind of guru,、um, <laughs> which is awesome. So, and you know, I like for me as you you may see on my channel, like I have my buddy Wells. 
you know, and he's a friend of mine that recently got into watches. So I have him as like a buddy to nerd out with over watches, but most of my family and friends aren't as into them. Um, most probably don't own more than one or two. And like, you know, I would hope that they see me in the same way when they decide to buy a new or used watch. Like maybe they'll like reach out to me and, and yeah, want to pick my brain, but. They, they probably <laughs> will. I, I very, hope so. Very soon. Maybe they're just not into the, in, in, in the market for it right now. Yeah. It might I'm, be sure better, they, I'm sure they will. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> well, you know, I think we've hit on some really cool topics based on your collection and your collecting experience. But I kind of want to know a bit more about like your personal preferences in watches. Like what are some features or watch styles that you absolutely love or you find visually appealing? Um, and what about some that you dislike or just can't stand? Um, yeah, I, I'd love to hear more. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm more drawn into dress watches and watches with a simple dial. Mm. And I, I, most of my watches are like that. And I like symmetry. Uh, before I was on the hunt for a sun and moon watch. And I found this Carnival nine, eight, 1986 uh, from Alibaba, which had the perfect proportions of subdials. I don't know, something, it just looked like hmm. it was the right proportion. So, yeah. With, when it comes to budget watches, it's hard to find one with my ideal proportion. So, I, I, yeah. I got that one. As for the stuff I don't like, I'm not so fond of too rugged watches. Okay. Like, you know how those, those, those G Shocks with so many. Like, yeah, just bulk. Uh, yeah, <laughs> bulky, yeah. Um, I don't like open heart. Okay. Uh, it just looks like it looks like a part yeah like if it's a person and there's like a hole in your body or something <laughs> like Iron Man <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I also don't like watches that are too in your face mm. like 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 the, the ones that shout so much that, that try to get so much attention yeah look at me <laughs> um, yeah look at me uh, that's why I guess it's taken me so long to find a, a dive watch in a certain budget, uh, sure. but I finally found one that I think I might like. Oh yeah! I have the Martinero Bayshore coming in. I think maybe September. I pre-ordered it like back in April. Yeah. And I think they're gonna deliver it in September. It has a 38 millimeter case diameter, and the bracelet design looks really nice and comfortable. So I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to that one coming in. Sure. I, hope, I mean, I hope it looks good on me. Yeah. But the design looks very clean and very not so sporty. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized going through affordable watches has helped me find out what I like and I don't like. And to anyone who looks down on homage watches, give it a shot. I think it's like getting a trial version of a more expensive version. Mm -hmm. And if you realize that you're not into the design, then it's not such a it's not such a big loss, and you might also realize that you're happy with the homage version, and there's no need to spend big money on the expensive version anyway. Um, I haven't had watch snobs look down on me so far, <laughs> well, at least not openly to my face. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think that's yeah, that's a. Uh... Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that about affordable watches. I feel like so many people go that route, like the average person. And I agree 100%. Like going through that affordable and homage path has really let me see and test the waters on so many different styles and types of watches to like really discern what I do and don't like about a watch as well. And yeah, I had to be honest when you were when you're going over like the Martinero Bayshore watch, I had to look it up um because i hadn't heard of it before and it's a really nice looking watch and i think for you like the proportions are going to be perfect um i see why you like it based on what you said too about the symmetry and it's not overtly in your face it's it's clean it's balanced with the numbers on the bezel are small like unobtrusive so i think it's a great watch choice um and i can't wait to see more when you get it I, it's like i'm excited but i know you're excited <laughs> you're way more I'm excited, excited yeah, yeah. <laughs> to get that so um yeah great. when i get it i'm gonna make a video about it 
Oh, for, for sure. sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll be yeah. the first one. I'll be like, I'll <laughs> comment first in the comments and like and thank yeah. you. <laughs> but, you know, I got to say, Eve, like this has been a really fun and just engaging conversation for me. I'm sure it's been for our viewers as well. And I just wanted to say thank you so much like for taking the time to come onto my channel for this discussion and letting us to get to know more about you and your watch collecting journey. Um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute honor to be here. Oh, that's now the honor. Pleasure is all mine. And yeah, again, to my <laughs> Schwartz Force out there, please be sure to support Eve here by subscribing to both her YouTube and her Instagram accounts. Like I said, phenomenal work. Or, and I'll have the links down in the description below. So make sure you guys go do that and send some love over to Eve. So thank you. All right. Well, we got to do another. We'll do another in the future for sure. Uh, but. Thanks again, and you have a uh, great week. Have a great week, too. Yeah. All right, thanks. And bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>